<laughs> We're live. <laughs> oh, we're in oh. space. Oh. Oh. Okay, we are actually live. All right, yeah. Live. Is, every, is everybody ready? <laughs> Sam's here. <clears throat> oh, double lid. There's two. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> twin lids. <laughs> <laughs> The twin lids of Tatooine. I, I can hear the. Yeah, I can hear yeah, me too. Somewhere. That's me. Is it on a phone or something. Oh, is it? Oh, it's well done. Yeah. No, it's, it's not me. It's not, it's me. not me. Is it me? It's not me. Is it me? It's not me. We, it's not, it's me. not that we, we can't hear it from in there, can we? No, something's coming through. Coming from somewhere in this room. Oh. The, sh the sound was coming from, from inside the room. room. Was it you, Ravs? No. It's not me. <laughs> I think it's it was Ravs. He looked at his phone, then it stopped. It's not me. <laughs> okay, well, let's continue, shall we? Professionalism. <laughs> it's not me. So this is Bodega the Radio Play. This is a, the first read-through that we've done as a group, so Ever. there might be some mistakes, but we're going to give it a go. Who the fuck over? And <laughs> shall we begin? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Nerd note, this is not canon wow. for all the Bodega nerds out there. All right, so do we start with the music? <coughs> yeah, let's start with the music. Okay. And hopefully, the levels are roughly right for everyone and for the stream. Sound effect. No, I'm not. Hey, 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 the House of the Churning Stomach. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> well, parts, I know I ain't much of one for saying this kind of stuff, but uh, I hope you're merry and such like and so forth. Aye, well, I'm no pissed enough for this sort of deep emotional shite. Just get another round in. Uh, just a spepsy for me, please, Rab. Spepsy? Who drinks spepsy at Christmas? And why no scope, eh? I love and hate Spepsy. I, I don't drink alcohol. Look, we've spoken about this before, eh? Nay foreign languages. I'm speaking normally, Rab. I just... Say it again, slowly. I don't drink alcohol. Nope, nothing. <sighs> it's like I can't even hear the words, just a sort of buzzing sound. I'll get your Spepsy name. Thanks. Bodega and Tamira stroll over to the bar. Great fun is being had, but over it all, the skirl of the space bagpipes cuts through the atmosphere like a terrible odour. The two can't help but listen to the tune for a while. Haunting, isn't it? Gork darn terrible is what it is. As Bodega and Tamira order the drinks, they notice a large, ruddy-cheeked gentleman in a faded and torn red onesie wearing a long red nightcap. His costume is adorned with what was clearly once fluffy white trim, but what is now tatty grey scraps. He looks like he's spent a, few good, a good few decades sleeping in a urinal, <laughs> and he smells like he has definitely spent a good few decades sleeping in a urinal. Ho, ho, ho. You all right, pard? Ooh, sweet groggle, friend. You smell like the inside of a Rebarthian gusset beast. Well, thanks for your folksy bluntness, young man. I'm sorry about my friend. He's had a few too many. Too many? Hell, Tamira, I ain't even into double digits. What's troubling you, stranger? 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 How sad that people keep calling me that. Once upon a time, everybody knew my name. 
I wouldn't have been able to sit here for three seconds without a crowd gathering. And now, now people I've never met before tell me I smell like a toilet. Ho, ho, ho. Oh shucks. I didn't mean to offend, pard. I just, I ain't much for talking. Let me buy you a drink. I'll have a pint of nuclear rain. Cheers. Bodega took a step back. A nuclear rain? That was a drink no man should sup. It was one shot of every liquor on the top shelf, mixed up in a glass, with a single isotope of highly radioactive mega radium on top, and a cherry. Holy Flarvin's Christmas pard! Christmas? Christmas? What do you know about Christmas? Well, uh, not much, I guess. It's the day when everybody goes to the pub and gets drunk, right? Wrong! Come, young ones, let me tell you my tale. Ho, ho, ho. Come on over and sit at our table. Oh, Tamira, come on. Dude smells like a... Like the ass of a Tregalian moozlefly, I know. But look at his sad little face. I'm fine, but I ain't adopting him for the whole night. Bodega, Tamira, and the man make their way to the table. Pards, this is... Shoot, I don't believe I caught your name, stranger. My name is... Father Christmas! <gasps> yes, exactly. Ho, ho, ho. No, 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 we're, gras we're gasping at the smell. No, well, uh, have none of you heard the name Father Christmas before? Nope. Sweet jumping groggle on Christmas Eve too. <laughs> oh, come on now, man. Have a wee sit down and tell us your tale. All right. All right, I will. But this all happened long before you were born. But back then I was a young man happily plying my trade as an immortal folk hero. Back on... Planet Earth! Until one day... Well, Mrs. Claus, it's nearly Christmas Eve. Who would have thought that even now, in the year 2019, we would still be delivering presents to all the good girls and boys of the world? I know, it's bonkers. We've been at this for hundreds of years and people still have a seemingly unending appetite for consumerist gift giving. Well, that's the last of the first billion presents wrapped. Are the elves hard at work in the manufacturing zone? Oh, as ever, husband. Part of the reason this entire enterprise is successful is the fact they work tirelessly and for free. Indeed. Nothing can stop our carefully managed and logistical impossible Christmas, juggernaut Mrs. Claus. Come in! <laughs> Father, Mrs. Turn on BBC News 24! Get back to work, Elf! Yes, Father! Breaking news! Oh, look! The planet's top scientists and world husband. leaders have today announced that Sam, you pause it. <laughs> pause it. <laughs> look, husband, it's, it says breaking news! Oh! They say that about everything. Look! Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> the planet's top scientists and world leaders have today announced that they have cracked the secret to faster than light travel and limitless energy. World governments are united in their plan to colonize distant worlds and begin the bright new dawn in but the no history of humanity. World peace has been declared. In other news, Love Island has been cancelled. This is a disaster! I know! I love that show! No, wife! Think about it! Now we're going to have to deliver presents to planets far beyond our own solar system! The sleigh just isn't up to it! Oh gosh, you're right, husband! This could be the end of Christmas as we know it! As we know it! As we know it! As we know it! So you're saying you're an immortal? From thousands of years ago, and you used to deliver presents and all that stuff? 
Heck, I think I heard something to do with that a long time ago. You may have heard the legends in passing in some dusty old tome, but it's true. I used to bring Christmas joy to all the peoples of Earth that lived in certain countries and shared a roughly <laughs> similar cultural background. But Christmas is still a thing. Space Christmas, or Christmas, as everyone insists on calling it, is nothing more than a vague nod to a once great tradition. Uh -huh. oh, oh, oh. I can already tell where this is going to go. How do you mean? Look, this old drunk is telling us some fantastic tale about how we've lost the spirit of Christmas and so on. And we're going to help him get back on his feet. And we're going to help him rediscover his love of Christmas and return Christmas cheer to people and all that stuff. But it's been done before, right? It's almost like the plot to the film Elf with Will Ferrell. There you go again, Nebish, talking about your classical movie collection. Oh, can we just get on with it? I mean, who cares, right? It's just some Christmas stuff that's going going on and we're going to help out, right? Also, you're wrong, young man. Oh, really? Well, please, pray tell, what do you need us to do? In order to save Christmas, we must kill the elves. Jesus. Yeah, that took a dark turn, pard. Oh, I take it back. Aye. You didn't see that coming, uh, that coming did you, Nebish, you wee ball bag? Fuck off. <laughs> it's not what you think. The elves have taken a dark path. The butchered and ate Mrs. Claus, then abandoned me at the North Pole, having beaten me savagely. They stole a spaceship and broke out for the stars. They operate from a secret base inside the Dark Zone. And they don't make presents anymore. They make chemical weapons for dictators. Not... The murder elves? That's them! Murder elves? I've heard of them. I assumed it was just a load of bollocks, but what I've heard matches up with what the stinky old geezer is saying. There are a group of beings one could easily describe as tiny little Christmas elves operating out of the dark zone, and they do make the most hideous chemical weapons in the galaxy. Well, I'm glad to hear you're as appalled as I am. But there's something I need to tell you. I... Sam! Valve! <laughs> the elves! They're shooting the place to kingdom come! Eventually, the dust settles and the fighting stops. Groans can be heard all over the bar. I think they made a break for it out the back door. What the farve were they doing here? <gasps> Father's Christmas! He's been shot! Oh, oh, those wicked elves! They got me right in the body! <laughs> I needed the parts they shot too! Look at this bit hanging out! That looks important! Ho, ho, ho! Christmas is dead, but but you can still save the galaxy. You must destroy the elves' base, or they'll, they'll... He's gone. They'll... Oops, still got a few more words left in him, I guess. They'll... Spit it! Out. He's gone. They'll... <laughs> oh, for Flav's sake. They'll what? But Father's Christmas was dead. As the light faded from his eyes, the crew... <laughs> okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going mad here. They'll kill everyone. Is he did? Lord, I hope so. It's not like it was even worth waiting around for him to finish that sentence. I mean, it was already implied. 
father's Christmas was definitely this time. No coming back from this. He was dead. Christmas elves will destroy the galaxy. What do we do? We'll, we'll look for them. We'll find them. And we're going to kill them. Luckily, I have a very particular set of skills. Skills that make me a nightmare for murderous Christmas elves like these. Okay, well, let's get back to the ship. We'll head to this dark zone, kill all the elves. If this drunk, smelly, old, half-crazy bastard said we got to do this to save the galaxy, we got to do what we got to do. Let's vamoose! Played the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you out? You're, you're dead. Tom's dead. <laughs> Tom's I'll dead. Take over your seat. Oh yes. Shall I move on? Look, you get it. You get it. I've got audio. Yeah. Do you want to stop today? Yeah. Swap me. Oh, sorry. Crap. Oh lord. The crew of the Disco Volante collected their things, quickly finished their drinks, bade a Merry Christmas to the surviving bar staff, and hurried to the ship. Blasting off into orbit, they began formulating their plan. Engaging hyperspace! The Dark Zone is on the other side of the Asteroid Zone. We're going to have to navigate carefully through that before we can even think about finding these accursed Christmas elves hell-bent on destroying the galaxy. Thanks for the recap, Nevish. How bad is this Asteroid Zone? Oh, bad. It's just asteroids. Big spinny ones, pointy ones, even ones that randomly explode. What is that going to sound like in space, given that space is totally silent? Well, we'll find out, I guess. Here we go. We're coming out of hyperspace. Sweet Groggle, I've never seen anything like this in my puff. Look out! Asteroids! You kidding me, Nap? We know. I'm sorry, I've just... I've never seen so many. What a perilous situation. So that's what it sounds like. Look out! On the left! Whoa! Whoa! All the extra gravity. This is like trying to steer a mork beast. The computer can't keep up with the calculations. Look out! Flarf this! I didn't want to die a flarvin' rock! Hold my special brew! Grabbing his trusty gore hammer and taking a deep breath, Rab launched himself from the front airlock. <laughs> Rab, you mad son of a gun! I, sus I suspect Tartanians are immune to the extreme cold of space. Oxygen deprivation... Well, well, we'll find out, I guess. Rab went to work, smashing asteroids the size of football stadiums to pieces with the might of his iron gore hammer. Rab's hammer is so flaving powerful that the sound of it can be heard in the vacuum of space. Impossible! Incredible! Ah, uh, just standard Tartanian stuff. Ain't one of them can't break the laws of physics time to time if the mood takes them. After knocking a path through the roids, Rab span his hammer triumphantly, and in doing so was able to sort of zoom back to the ship. Just switch your brain off and accept this. Great, that was fun. Rab, oh thank Glog you're all right. Ah, that was nothing, lassie. I've smashed bigger. Nebish, I think I kind of already know the answer to this, but what is that huge area of space up ahead where there's no stars? You, you don't really need me to tell you, surely? Fine, I'll do it. Look! The Dark Zone! <gasps> and look they did. Crowding around the viewport, the crew squinted at the total darkness ahead, looking for any sign of a secret space elf base. The mysterious Dark Zone enveloped the ship, and the crew of the Disco Volante felt very alone. 
they went back to their stations, ready for trouble. Bodega, I've been running a long-range scan and I think I've detected something. A heat signature up ahead, buried in what looks like a... a planet. A planet in the dark zone. Must be mighty cold down there. They they might be living beneath the surface, doing their wicked space elf business. Let's charge. You always want to charge, Reb. Sometimes it ain't the best move. Aye, but look how dark it is. They'll never see us coming. Fair point. Firing up the engines. Let's go to attack speed. Hold tight! The Disco Volante zoomed towards the heat signature. As it drew closer, they turned on the mega headlights. Illuminated before them, a small icy ball. And on one side, what appeared to be an opening. Perhaps a tunnel? That's their hideout, I reckon. Tip at all! The disco flew down the opening, mega headlights panning around. Suddenly, a tiny ship zoomed towards them from a hidden cranny. Man the guns, we got company. They're hailing us. On screen. Strange vessel, you have stumbled into a whole heap of Christmas trouble. Leave now while you still can. This is Bodega. You killed Father's Christmas and you nearly spilled Rab's pint. Sorry, pard, but we got a fight brewing. Mm, so be it. Get him, boys! A dozen more bright green and red striped elf attack ships swarmed towards the Disco Volante. Take that, you squeaky elf bastard! Die, Christmas scum! Pow! Oh, shields at half power, Bodega! Okay, let's make it harder for him. Careening down the tunnel at high speed, the enemy vessels in hot pursuit. Bodega expertly dodges stalactites and stalagmites, as well as whatever the ones that go sideways are called. How many left? No many. I think we lost the last few through these tunnels. Look! That landing pad up ahead decorated with twinkly lights and space tinsel. And there! Buildings! It's their base! Looks like we found the varmint's grotto. Get ready to fight. The Disco Volante lands. The crew suit up in space clobber, arm themselves, and descend the ramp. They're immediately met with a volley of green and red laser fire. You asked for it, pards! Bodega unslung his, la his las gun and began blasting a wide-angle beam straight at the elf base. Careful, Bodega! You might melt the whole planet! Too late! The power of the mighty and famous Laz gun is too great for the icy planet, which begins melting and breaking up all around them. <laughs> Hold! Hold them off! No, you bastards! This is a very festive! Who are you? Answer quick! I am Krugnuts, leader of the Space Elves. You foiled our plan to drop chemical weapons on every planet in the galaxy this Christmas. Decades of work for nothing. Curse you, Bodega! You killed Father's Christmas. Well, he wasn't such a nice guy. Made us work for nothing. Turned us into these murderous space elves you see before you. For years, we toiled away day and night just to make toys for children. And get this, he didn't even care if we were naughty or nice. They all just got presents anyway. And the letters the children sent, he would pin up the ones with the worst spelling on a big board and laugh at them. And don't make me tell you what he used to do with his reindeer. Father Christmas was a complete bastard. Hmm, well, the way I see it, sounds like maybe he was a bastard. You guys are bastards too. Maybe it's a good thing Christmas ain't a thing anymore. It's, it's gonna end up with people like y'all in charge. Perhaps. But the message of Christmas lives on. In the hearts of good people everywhere. We lost our way, young one. But spread the true message of Christmas. That giving is the true gift. That love conquers all. 
and that Brussels sprouts and roast parsnips are amazing if you have a really good gravy to go with them. Also, roast potatoes and goose fat. Trust... me. <laughs> oh, thanks. This place is falling apart. We better scoot, guys. Let's get... With the ice planet collapsing around them, the crew piles into the Disco Volante. And blamos! The Flav, and blamos the Flav out of there, just as the entire place breaks apart. <laughs> Bodega, we're being held again. It's the elf leader. What the Flav? On screen. Ah! That's it. That's the message. Well, why did he take the time to send that? I mean, we could have guessed. Wait, it had an attachment. It says use this to remind people that Christmas is still alive. What is that, Nib? Oh, uh, looks like a computer program. I'm, I'm checking it now. Oh, yeah, looks like it configures the guns and the engines to light up a huge patch of space with an incredibly bright light show. What's it, what is the message? Oh, can't tell. Could be something really unpleasant or could be something, something really nice, I guess. Florvin, run the program. The ship took on a life of its own, blasting at pockets of space and zooming in mad directions at insane speeds. The crew were flung around inside, so mad were the turns and pirouettes. Jinx! Hold on, yo! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. Okay, <laughs> okay, ship leveling off. Wait, the autopilot is plotting a course. We're going somewhere. Back where we started, near the house of the churning stomach. Hooks, look at that. Rab and the others gazed in wonder out of the viewport. And there before them, lit up was a message in the sky, visible for light years around. Merry Christmas. Aye. Aye it is. The end. So, thank you very much, guys. I was yeah. Sam did all the foley work. And Tom was a lot of the foley work as well, also the narrator and the elves. Uh, Mark also did a lot of the foley work. He was Nebish. Uh, Rab's, of course, was Rab. Thank you to Lydia. As Tamira, I was Bodega. Tom Clark was Santa Claus. I'm sorry, Father's Christmas. And uh, yeah, thanks, guys. That was a lot of fun. But thank you. Thank you for everybody. watching. Well, uh, thank you for listening. Now, thank you to you guys for listening. That was the Bodega Radio Play. And now uh, we've got something to do. I guess we're going to take a break and then we'll come back with some pre-karaoke stuff. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. We'll just wait here while Sam cuts the stream. <laughs> I'll run away. Oh, yeah. We'll oh, sit yeah. here quietly. Just Everybody oh, don't forget. No one say anything. Yeah. Humblebundle.com forward slash Yogscast to support some amazing charities and mm, get amazing. a huge bundle of games. That's it. <clears throat> you can leave now. That Goodbye.